Hello and welcome to another edition of Lost Louisiana. What's in a name, part four. I'm your host, Charlie Winham. For many years at LPB, we have traveled the countryside looking for towns with unusual names and asked that simple question, how did that town get their name? This time out, we set our sights on five Louisiana communities, towns like Plain Dealing, Bogalusa, Thibodeau and Eunice, as well as the town I'm in right now, Opelousas, Louisiana, the Zydeco music capital of the world, and spice capital of Louisiana. But we begin with a community that has hosted some of the biggest names in the music industry for over 30 years. That town is Bogalusa, Louisiana. Bogalusa features one of the best music recording studios in the country. And entertainers like Stevie Wonder, Jimmy Buffett, and Gatemouth Brown are just some of the stars to set foot in this paper mill town. In Washington Parish, there is a community with a factory in the city and a studio in the country. Welcome to Bogalusa, the mill town that understands the importance of paper as well as a little bit of gold and platinum. But before we talk about tall pine trees and towering music stars, how did Bogalusa get its name? Well, the story we hear is that it was an Indian name from the area, and the first settlers understood it to be Boglusa, and it was Bog, it's two different words, B-O-G-U-E, Lusa, L-U-S-A, and it what meant uh, smoky or dark waters. Bog is the creek part of it, the water part of it, and Lusa was either the smoky or dark part of it. That's how it got its name, and it was incorporated. Mm -hmm. It's the only town with that name ever anywhere. In the early 1900s, the Goodyear family of Buffalo, New York, opened the Great Southern Lumber Company and built the largest sawmill in the world for that time. The name Bogalusa was trademarked and printed on every pine board. This Bogalusa lumber was well known across the country for its exceptional quality. It was a tent city when they first started out here, and it was a wild west town. There's no two ways about it. I mean, the dogs ran loose, the pigs ran loose, there were shoot 'em ups and everything else. That tent city would soon grow into a sophisticated jewel of the South. The Great Southern Lumber Company, with all the building supplies you could ever need, built up Bogalusa, complete with a spectacular hotel known as the Pine Tree Inn. The company also built a hospital and business district. At the highest point of land, some of the most regal homes for their time sprouted out of the pine forest. The residents were company executives and company doctors, and even the mayor of Bogalusa. They wanted to feel like they were still in New York, I guess, with the wonderful houses because of the basements and everything. Highest point in the town, they have basements. But they wanted it to look beautiful and palatial, even though they were out in the middle of the woods. They tried to urbanize it, I suppose. At that time, they wouldn't have used that word, I don't think. But they really did try to make it into something spectacular, and it was. Under the direction of Frank Goodyear, Charles Goodyear, and Mayor William Sullivan, the town of Bogalusa grew from 1,600 residents in 1907 to over 15,000 by 1930. Professional baseball also made its way through town. Mayor Sullivan persuaded the St. Louis Browns, now the Baltimore Orioles, to hold spring training in Bogalusa back in 1921. This Washington Parish town also was the home to the Bogalusa Y Tigers and played Negro League teams across the South. The Y stands for YMCA, which was the first sponsor of the Tigers. Players like Babyface Green, Dazzy Vance, and Stumpy Horn were recruited from colleges and high schools in neighboring states. The general manager for the paper mill would give players a job. Paper put Bogalusa on the map. But some Bogalusa natives are well known for what they've put down on paper. Pulitzer Prize winning poet Yusuf Komunyaka was born in Bogalusa and currently teaches at Princeton University. And in the world of music, Bogalusa is the birthplace of Henry Byrd, more commonly known as the legendary New Orleans piano player Professor Longhair. And the beat goes on. Just outside of town is a world-class recording facility called Studio in the Country. Built in the 70s, Studio in the Country has recorded some of the biggest names in music. The who's who of the recording industry has basically been through this studio from um, 
Stevie Wonder to Willie Nelson to Blues Traveler to Marilyn Manson, Louisiana LaRue, uh, the Neville Brothers, Dr. John, uh, Alan Toussaint, um, and Pete Fountain, Clifton Chenier, and of course, Gate Mouth Brown. Along these walls are gold and platinum albums recorded at Studio in the Country. The biggest seller out of here was for the soundtrack Dirty Dancing, selling at last count 27 million copies worldwide. Inside these walls, Jimmy Buffett and the Neville brothers worked side by side. Buffett, along with Blues Traveler, went multi-platinum here. Kansas recorded Dust in the Wind. Clifton Chenier's recorded a Grammy winner, and so did Gatemouth Brown. And perhaps this hit, recorded here by Louisiana LaRue, rings a bell. Studio in the Country has earned its spot as a top recording facility because, in part, it is one of the few studios built from the ground up. Visually, it's an open room, but uh, sound-wise, you're able to isolate different instruments in an open area because of an acoustic trap system above and uh, there are no right angles or parallel surfaces in the building. It's the room itself. Anyone who has ever worked in here or even performed in here. They just talk about it and you can see it come across their face and they get this gleam in their eye about, oh yeah, a studio in the country. We've been blessed with uh, some of the best in the world recording in this studio. And all have been happy and referred other clients to us. And you know, that's how the, the studio got the reputation that it has. One hit that studio in the country could have done without is Hurricane Katrina. The storm damaged the roof and part of the studio, but repairs are near complete and the studio is scheduled to reopen this spring, ready to continue where they left off. It makes you feel real good to know that you've, uh, somebody in Bogalusa, Louisiana has made an impact on the entire music world, actually. I mean, really, think about it. If you look at that one award out there on Dirty Dancing, the one that has all the flags on it, each one of those flags represents a country that that record went platinum in. Now imagine that, something coming out of Bogalusa, Louisiana. Studio of the Country is scheduled to reopen soon, and you might want to keep an eye out for a Louisiana band making a name. The group is the Benji Davis Project, and they have recorded three CDs so far at Studio in the Country. If you get the chance, give them a listen. <laughs> 